Hi, my name is Mark Piller. In this video, I would like to demonstrate a feature we included into the latest release of WebWorp for Java, version 4.3. What you see here on the screen is the management console for WebWorp. I have WebWorp running locally as a standalone process. However, this feature would be equally available if WebWorp is deployed in any Java servlet container. To see the feature, I'm going to switch to the messaging server. And here you see a list of the messaging applications, being RTMP applications, hosted inside of WebWorp. By the way, the actual feature is the code generator for all RTMP features supported by WebWorp. You can select any of the existing applications or create your own, and once you select an application, you will see the code generator tab. Once I switch to the tab, you can see a list of different client types and formats that we support out of the box, and we're working on extending this list. So in this case, I'm going to generate code formatted as a Flex application which is selected by default. All the features that the code can be generated for are listed right here as checkboxes. Generating the code is extremely easy. All you do is you select the checkboxes for the features you want to be generated, and the code is automatically generated. All the project files for Flash Builder are automatically included into the generated code. So to demonstrate everything that this particular code generator can do, I'm going to select all of the checkboxes. except for this one. We will look into this a little bit later. So here I have selected support for video broadcast and the generated code can demonstrate how to do video broadcast from a Flex client and WebWorp for Java. There is also video recording, support for remote shared objects, data push from server, and server method invocation, meaning invocation of the server side methods from the client. To generate the code, all I need to do is to click the download code button and a zip file is generated and returned back into the browser, as you can see right here. I'm going to switch to Flash Builder and import this particular project into Flash Builder. So here I have Flash Builder on my screen. I'm going into File, Import, Existing Projects into Workspace, and then locate my project directory. The name of the project will also contain the name of the actual RTMP application with demo app appended to it. I'm going to select the default SDK. By the way, the project is fully configured, meaning that all the compiler properties and Flex server directories are going to be automatically inserted by WebWorp in there. As you can see, the dash services argument and the Flex build path will also be properly mapped out. We can run this application without making any changes to the source code. It is ready to go as is. I'm going to quickly run this app. As you can see, the structure of the user interface resembles the selection of the features we have selected in the Web Work Management Console. For every selected feature, being the checkboxes that you have selected, we get a separate panel that demonstrates how to use the APIs and the feature itself. The very first is Video Broadcast. And here we can connect to the server and start streaming the video that other clients can connect and watch that video in real time. I'm going to connect to the server and start the broadcast. So now my camera is connected. I'm on a dual monitor setup, therefore the camera is on the side. I know it looks a little bit strange, but here it is. You can see it is being recorded uh, and broadcast in real time. Uh, to view the broadcast, I'm going to click the View Broadcast button. And it launches the viewer. To start watching the video, just click quickly. I'm going to click this button. You can see that we have a live broadcast uh, coming through uh, WebWorp for Java. So as you can see, we can easily watch that live stream in real time. I'm going to stop watching and close this browser window. Now back to the publisher. I'm going to stop the broadcast and now switch to the second feature, which is video recording. In this particular panel, we can record a video directly from the browser by doing exactly the same thing as with broadcast, connecting first, and uh, once I click the Start Record button, the video will be recorded in real time. And I can start recording right now just by clicking the Start Record button. So here it is, the video is being recorded. When it plays back, you will not hear the audio because I had to mute my speakers, uh, otherwise I would be getting a very bad reverberation. So now the video is recorded and we can watch it right here in, uh, in real time as well. So as you can see, the video is playing right now. This is the recorded video. Okay, so let's disconnect from here and uh, switch the remote shared object. 
If you're not familiar with remote shared objects, the best way to think about it is a distributed hash table, which has a logical name and different clients can connect to it. Once a particular client makes a change in that hash table by assigning a value to a property or clearing the values, all other clients connected to the same remote shared objects get automatically notified. To experiment with a feature, we can connect and then assign uh, a key, let's call it a city, and the value is going to be DAOs. Click update are we so, and now this particular remote shared object contains this particular key value pair. So any other client connected to this particular remote shared object would be able to see exactly the same pair of values. To demonstrate this, I'm going to open another browser, connect to exactly the same application, and we should be able to see exactly the same key value pair in this particular remote shared object. So let's connect, and as you can see, key and value pair is exactly there. If I add another key value pair, let's say country, and the value is USA, so now we have two key value pairs. And going back to the first one, we see exactly the same key value pairs in this particular remote shared object. This client can clear the values, and the other client is automatically synchronized. So remote shared objects are a very powerful feature and available to you with WebWorp for Java. The other two features, data push from server and server method invocation, they require a special setup. And to demonstrate this, you have to change configuration option so there is a server-side code that the client can invoke or the code from the server can push data into the clients. The simplest way to make this change is to go back to the Web Warp Management Console, select the application for which the code has been generated, and then click the Edit Application button. Right here, there's going to be a list of handlers which could be configured for this particular application. The one you need to choose is webwarp.examples.rtmpdemo.appHandler. Select it and then click Save. Once you make this change, go back to the browser and just reload this application. By making this change, we're putting special code on the server side which will support these particular examples. So for data push, once we connect and click Start Data Push, that server side code is executing client side function by delivering server side timestamp. We can stop and restart data push anytime by using this particular button. The server method invocation example demonstrates how to invoke server side functions, in this, in this case Java methods, from the Flex client. So here if we specify input value, simple hello, and click echo string, it invokes the echo string method on the server. Or we can execute a method where we pass array collection as an argument, which is a hard-coded array collection. Once again, the source code for all of these features is included into the project generated by WebWorp. I also would like to note that everything that I have demonstrated today in this video is available for free with the WebWorp Community Edition. So download the product, try it out, and let us know what you think. And as always, happy coding!